A large portion of the Paladins community has been pushing for a while that flankers should have less burst damage and more mobility. And now teased in the Developer Diary 2, covering flank champions in Open Beta 68, the next patch coming, it seems we are going to get some of that. And it seems we're getting a Developer Diary every day now on each of the different classes, so we're getting tomorrow front lines, which we'll be talking about when it comes out. But what they're trying to do here with the Developer Diary, let's just talk about what they're showing off to first of all. So they're setting out their agenda for what they want flankers to do. What they say is, flank champions are defined by a few core characteristics. Depending on the champion and overall meta, we have leaned heavier into some of these qualities, which is kind of the lean this patch away from the high burst at close to medium range, which is one of the categories. Another category is discrete moments of extreme survivability. Many flanks have abilities that grant them short bursts of high survivability or even conditional immunity. So we've got Book's Recovery, Drops Reversal, Zins Below, Maeve's Nine Lives, and Moji's Magic Barrier. And then we also have a little troll one, an image of Pip's Weightless. Honest, in honesty, I do think that Pip's maybe a, slash, a damage slash healer this patch more than a flanker. I mean, he could still go into the flanking role, but Pip works quite well sitting back, dealing down some quite heavy damage, going in occasionally and dropping down the heals. But the, the Pip flanker meme's pretty strong still. Okay, back to the seriousness. High mobility. Of all the roles, flank champions have the most mobility. They use the mobility as a tool for repositioning, engaging, or escaping. Flanks will rely on careful positioning and the rest of the kit to ensure they are able to escape when engaging with an enemy. Picking the right time to use mobility is essential. And risk versus reward. In short, flanks will go into the back lines, try and get a kill, and will hopefully have their abilities on Gulan to come out again. But they have to try and time everything to be able to get in and out. And the better flanks are the ones that come out unscratched. But the flanks in season two, which is going to start in OB68, which is likely not next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after, is that whilst they're not completely blanket changing the flankers of ability, as flankers are quite diverse in what they can do, not every flanker has a super dash or anything like that, but they're giving some examples of a few of them. So Androxus first up has an increase in his another step dash range of 15%. Hello, you folks. But to counteract that, he's having his revolver maximum damage going from 580 per shot to 520. Not massive, but it is quite a sizable drop. Also on top of that, so both they've extended his mobility, it's kind of back to where it was-ish, and lowered his burst potential, which people were complaining about. They've also given new ways to reset the nether steps. So Abyssal Touch is the card where if you punch somebody with Defiance, then you can go towards resetting your nether steps and you can full reset with this card now at level five, which currently it didn't. They also give a buff on the cooldown reduction of Disrupt for the reversal, which will work well with the reversal into nether step loadout. And they're reworking some of the cards that are a bit more redundant. So Featherweight Spite and Watchful are all getting better. They haven't said exactly what they are, but all in all, I think this is great. Defiance especially is something that is relatively easy to hit. So imagine punching somebody, dashing around, shooting a little bit, and going back in for the next punch. That would be rather interesting, but we could get the dash and drugs. But that's the mobility going up, burst damage going down. Same with Eevee. Eevee here is actually just getting a pretty much flat buff here. So Blink's distance here is increased by 15% as well. Again, yes. So base, the Blink on Eevee is going to be better, which means that you don't have to go so much into her teleport card and spend it on other things. They've also removed the accuracy loss whilst airborne with the Eevee, so the Blink Eevee is going to be a bit more crazy yet, so it's going to be better still. I know that the Eevee at the moment with the Sora is kind of picking up traction a bit, where you can reset the Sora after a kill, so you basically keep Sora and kill Sora, kill Sora but hopefully this will bring back the Blink build a bit more than it has been. I think this is a, a, another one that's good. Talus is something that's a bit different. So with Talus, they're lowering his health a little bit from 2000 to 1900. And the main thing is changing Blitz upper. So at the moment, you can push forwards and punch into a large area of enemies. Now it's only a single person that you'll hit with the Blitz upper. And also it's more accurate. So it's the radius of the punch is 20% less with the collision. They're also changing the cards Antediluvian, Ancient Power, Daredevil, and Spirited with some small buffs. The only one I'm a bit worried about is Antediluvian because that's the card that applies a cauterize and overcharge, which was really powerful already. The other cards are related to the Bits Upper, mostly reducing the cooldown of that, which makes sense because it is slightly less powerful than it was before. All in all, I don't think they're going crazy with the mobility here, but they're rolling back some of that extreme burst 
versus mobility that we had before. And I do find it frustrating at times in current Paladins how fast you can get burst down at times. And hopefully this will make the flank class a bit more skillful and a bit more jukey. And I think it's a step in the right direction. Be sure to let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section below on how you feel about the flanks. Was this something that you wanted to see coming back with the hyper mobility on the flankers versus the high burst potential? I know the last time we talked about this when it was first nerfed ages ago, I put a poll in the video and it was heavily in favor of the mobility versus the burst damage, but I'll probably put one again in this video, so be sure to vote on that one. And if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe for more of my content, and hit that bell icon to become part of the notification squad. Thanks for watching, everybody. Joshino.